I can't imagine living through the death of a loved one every year in such a public way. Every year where you're asked, how are you doing and how's the family doing and you're never allowed to even set it aside for a minute, every year you know you're going to be asked to tell your story. And so when a family member comes out and tells their story, it's an incredibly personal moment and this is no different. And it moved us all and it's a much better story than anything we could possibly sell. No matter, no matter how good our speeches are and no matter how much we have to say, your story is the story we want to hear today. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, if you wouldn't just do me one favor, if you give one more round of applause for opening their hearts to us. There you go. This is about you today. It is. And all the family members that are here. I needed that time to compose myself. And I thank you for that. Because we all do remember where we were 15 years ago. And we all know the sacrifices that almost 3,000 people made by simply going to work. Simply doing what we as Americans do every day. 3,700 in New Jersey, 64 in Morris County, 147 in Middletown, New Jersey, where my eight-year-old son was going to school that day. My eight-year-old son. Why do I mention that? Because today is about the stories of the survivors. We loved them all. They were loved. They are loved. But if you did what if you did what I did the day after 9-11, when you were trying to make some sense of this horrible tragedy, if you did what I did, you went to church. And in my case, at Holy Cross Church in Rumson, where they lost 147 moms and dads and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, go down the list. <coughs> All I wanted that priest to do is answer, why? I'm sure not a day goes by where you don't ask that question. Why? Why me? Why them? Why him? Why her? How do we make sense of this incredible tragedy? Look behind me, ladies and gentlemen. That is evidence of a crime. When you come by later on and touch that, remember that's evidence of a crime. Murderous. You have to ask why. I don't have the answer. The priest that day didn't have the answer. The fact that he got me in church in the middle of the week was an amazing feat. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Somebody wanted us to come together and be reminded of what's important in our lives. And that is that we have more in common than we have in differences. I was with the Lieutenant Governor of New York today as we went to St. Peter's Church and honored the memory of the 87 Port Authority, New Jersey and New York. I always say that officers and civilians who died that day, and we both wore red jackets. She's a Democrat, I'm a Republican. And we both spoke. And we talked about how on that day, we had more in common than we had differences. On that day, we all remembered who we were first. We were humans, we were people, and it didn't matter if we were white or black, Jewish or Catholic, Muslim. It didn't matter what we were. All that mattered was that we were Americans. So as I stand here today and say, why, 15 years later? Why are we here and why are we still mem reminded? Why are we still remembering? I think the answer is really pretty simple. It's not about us anymore. And I don't mean any disrespect. 
It's about that child there. It's about that child in the back. The only way to make sense of what happened 15 years ago, to make sure the terrorists don't win, is to make sure our children understand that there is something more important than ourselves. That lesson was taught by your brother when he went into that building when everybody else was running out. There is something greater than ourselves, something more important than ourselves, something worth fighting for, something worth dying for. It's about passing that on to our children because Paul Fishman's child was not born on 9-11. When he enters high school, he will be the first generation of children who do not have a clue as to what that is. It is our job, our responsibility, and quite frankly, our commitment to the memories of those 3,000 people, whether it's the Pentagon, or Schwenksville, or New York, or the officers and the people, quite frankly, who are still dying as the result of 9-11. It is our responsibility, our commitment, to teach our children what happened that day. To teach our children that there's something more important than ourselves. To teach our children that we have more in common than we have differences. And if we do that, ladies and gentlemen, then, you know, we will have done our job. I hope we will help the 64 families in New Jersey, the 147 families in my town, and quite frankly, my eighth grader, my eight-year-old, to understand what happened that day. It's about service. It's funny you say the Air Force. I can't ever resist telling two stories. First, my eight-year-old was the only one on his bus when it came home that day. I had decided not to go pick him up at school because I didn't want him watching the towers going up and down and up and down all day, and I didn't want to have to explain to him what happened because I didn't know what happened. So he got off the bus, and the first thing he said to me was, why didn't you come and get me at school? I'm absolutely convinced that because I left him on that bus that day, 15 years later, he's a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy and is now a fighter jet pilot. I knew you'd like that. But the other story I like to tell is the agony of driving around the parking lots of the, of the ferries and the stations and understanding that the people that were parked in those parking lots the day after 9-11 were not coming home. And understanding that we had an obligation to remember that they're not coming home. You know, I will tell one more story and then I will finish. Okay, maybe two. I'm a politician. The first story is this. We can never forget the importance of what happened. You know, we get so wrapped up in the trivia of the day. I'll give you the story that always will be with me. Last year, I was coming to a 9-11 ceremony and I was complaining about, oh my goodness, what a tough light the lieutenant governor has driving around in her car and stuff isn't getting done the way I wanted it to get done. I literally, 20 minutes before I walked into a 9-11 event, was complaining about something so trivial I can't even remember it right now. Then I thought, I gotta get ready for this speech. And I turned to the security officer, a detective in the state police, who's assigned the task of protecting my life. And I asked him, I said, so where were you on 9-11? He said I was an NYPD officer on duty. Now, if that doesn't remind you of what's important in life, nothing ever will. Never forget, never forget our obligation and our duty to pass this on to our children. If we do that, we will be stronger, we will give meaning to the lives of, the, those, of those who lost, and we will be united against terrorism, and it will make sure that the terrorists never win. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having me. I appreciate the opportunity, and I really think today belongs to the survivors.